All right. Thank you for joining us and welcome to this E4M Kabula talk series, uh, which is a specially curated series touching upon topics that are of great concern to all of us. And today we'll be talking about uh, the theme for today is uh, strong together. In fact, uh, what uh, COVID has done uh, to all industries is pose great challenges and uh, publishers have not been uh, spared um, even. And today we have uh, some of the top uh, publishing uh, executives who will be talking about what COVID has done to them and how they tackled it. So before proceeding, I want to introduce my esteemed speakers. I have with me uh, Mr. Salil Kumar, who is the CEO of uh, CEO Digital India Today Group. Uh, welcome, Mr. Kumar. Uh, Mr. Arijit Chatterjee, Chief uh, Strategy Officer, NDTV. Mr. Rohit Chadda, CEO, Digital Publishing, G uh, Digital. Uh, Mr. Sanjay Sindhwani, CEO, Indian Express uh, Online Media. And uh, Mr. Ryan, Mr. Ran Buck, I'm sorry, Chief Revenue Officer, Tabula. Welcome uh, all of you to this uh, discussion. Uh, Hope uh, we have come to another phase of uh, the, you know, the, the narrative has shifted from where it was maybe a few months back. And now I think there's vaccine around and a lot of new uh, hope is around. So my first question to all of you is, uh, what emotions are you feeling? What keeps you strong during these uh, COVID times? I mean, how have the last nine months been for you? So I can maybe start with uh, Mr. Kumar. Well, uh... Let me begin with saying that uh, thanks for having us. And Ram, it's a pleasure to be again with you. Um, I think these are challenging times. Uh, these are also places where you look at disruption and how disruption gives you opportunity to uh, look at new avenues, be more innovative, be more flexible, and see what is it that you can deliver. And uh, obviously making sure that everybody is safe and healthy. I think... Uh, one of the things that the pandemic gave us was, you know, trust everyone and make sure that uh, the teams, the real asset of an organization being their manpower is taken care of. That's most important. And uh, that's what we did. And I'm sure everybody did uh, making them work from home, saying that, listen, work from home. It's a safer environment. Uh, work was second. Uh, health and family was given the first place. And obviously, we all felt the bump because suddenly the business had stopped. Um, but for the digital side, it had, it had turned around and we saw a huge influx of traffic and uh, great opportunities. Uh, what I was talking to Rohit some time back before we just joined or went live was how it turned around on OTT, how smart TVs came into play, uh, how mobile consumption has grown. There, I was reading another article which said mobile consumption uh, time spent is nearly doubled. So we saw a lot of people coming in, uh, reading news, and obviously they wanted news which was uh, accurate and factually correct. So, you know, everything was on an overdrive, whether it was the fact checking, whether it was uh, bringing the right news to the audience and trying to garner as much as market share as you could do. Right, right, right. Right. And uh, Mr. Chatterjee, uh, your response to this question, I mean, what, what emotions uh, are you feeling and what kept you going and what keeps you going in this tough time? Well, I'd like to thank us. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me and uh, always a pleasure to be with everyone right. virtually, hopefully soon in person. Right. Um, I'd like to thank a certain Mr. Daniels and a certain Mr. Jameson. No, I'm just kidding. Um, for keeping us strong uh, during this time. But... Uh, I think strong is too strong a word, really, Rahel. Um, I think we've all had our moments. Um, you know, right. um, it's been a tumultuous time the last nine months, things that we've never felt or experienced before. Staying away from friends, family, parents in some cases. So it's been a tough year, but I think what's kept um, um, us going um, is pretty much A, um, thankful and grateful for being healthy and friends and family being okay. And I know that, right. you know, this too should pass. So I think that's been something that's kept us strong. Um, um, and also I think the fact that, you know, um, making a subtle mention about taking as an opportunity, we saw um, real surge in consumption, uh, pretty much a tech, not, and, you know, for us it's broadcast and digital, and we pretty much saw a tectonic shift 
um, of consumption patterns, etc. Right, uh, moving towards digital, which we had always uh, believed in uh, as a force driver. Um, right, so just working and keeping, you know, as they say, the gunpowder dry, not doing anything silly, uh, making sure you get the basics right, keep it going, and then kind of building blocks to make sure that all this passes. You're still doing the things the right way. Um, and yes. also, I think just from a work perspective, personally, just working for a brand that people trust, um, you know, that people um, believe in credibility, I think keeps me going and wanting me to go to work every day. So I think that's what's right. really been um, the takeaway from the nine months. Yeah. Right. Mr. Sindhavani, what has been the story at the Express Group? So, uh, first of all, thanks for having me here and thanks to all the panelists. Uh, Story and Express, basically, uh, like everyone else, you know, this came as a surprise. Uh, but what I think is, you know, fear is a very strong emotion. And and when the pandemic struck, you know, everybody was fearful of what's going to happen. And everybody feared for the worst. And I think that kind of drives your survival instincts, you know. Uh, it's inbuilt mechanism in everyone to kind of, you know, figure out where right. And I think that brings out some of the best in people. And uh, initially, our response was, like Sarah mentioned, uh, you know, to ensure the safety of all our people, uh, you know, to give them that comfort that, you know, the organization is with them. We do whatever it takes to keep them safe, keep them protected and, and you know, enable them uh, to, to go through this crisis. Having mm -hmm. done, I think what we saw was that the teams really kind of... Uh, uh, you know, bounce back in a way we haven't seen in a long time. And uh, and as we were discussing before this session started, that, you know, it's it's been one of very good years for us, except for the right. initial couple of months. Uh, after right. that, we've, we've seen a rapid recovery and, and rapid growth. And everybody's mentioned consumption has been on top levels. And I think with the help of partners like the Bula and Google, uh, we also <laughs> saw the three being following up on, on the revenue side. Right, 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 right. So it's, it's been mostly uh, similar, you know, stories. Uh, but but uh, Mr. Chadda, if I have to ask you, has what's, what, what is the kind of uh, approach that you took at uh, digital? I know there's a lot of spike in digital, but I mean, what was your approach? Sorry, your audio is muted here. I said this before, I tend to do that. <laughs> So yeah, um, like everyone else, thanks, thanks for thanks for having me. Um, it's it's great to be in such a steam company. Um, mm. We were, uh, I mean, so I echo everyone's views. Sorry, I think there's some issue with the network. Uh, um, okay, I think let me uh, then wait for. Uh, Can you hear me now? Okay, okay yes, now it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, so what I was saying was like everyone, like everyone said, you know, so health comes first, family comes first. Um, and hence, uh, that was the first priority. Um, we did not have a culture of work from home before this. Um, so mm -hmm. I think that was a, that was a huge shift in, um, yeah. in how we started working. And um, what, what we saw was, uh, was, was tremendous growth. Um, I think the, the entire team really, uh, really showed their grit. And um, everyone came together to work, to do really, really well. Uh, we've, we've not been, you know, among, among the top in terms of our positions, in terms of ranking, etc. Till, till the past year. Um, but we saw with the, when the teams came together, um, started working together, irrespective, there was, there was, no, there was no timing, there was no, there was no day starting, there was no day end. Um, and I think it also helped the team to focus um, because you know when when you have fear in the air, then um, something something like work can really allow you to you know to not think about something that's bad and just change your focus and it helped that helped and um, and that that showed in the numbers um, we we've, we've grown really really well like most content players um, and yeah although initially um, the the revenue numbers didn't really kick in as the user numbers did, but that's that started moving um, in the same direction now. So uh, right. so yeah, it's 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 been a good time at, at least from a business perspective. Right, Mr. Buck, I want to come to you. You have been helping publishers deal with crisis 
uh, many a times you know you have done it but tell me what kept you going uh, what uh, what were the last nine, nine months like uh, at tabula so i will start to thank everyone that joined me for this panel uh, it's a big honor to be with all of you uh, i i think you ask about the motion I, i think i'm i'm very excited about the fact that after nine months uh, we are still strong together and we're working with a lot of publishers and advertisers to bring the right content to the right user but i want to start before that because i'm i think that all the things of uncertainty and someone even asked me about what is out of my, what is my my tips out of the box and i said what is the box so i think that one thing one thing that we learned is that probably in the last 9 month but probably also in the next 9 month we will face a lot of things out of the box we will we will need to figure it out the box for each one of us um right. because what we did until today not going to happen again or not going to be the the mode of operation for the nearest future i don't know what's going right. a lot of people are asking me working from home working from office um how are you going to manage it and i think that we need to wait and to see what will happen right. you know you talked optimistically about the about the um covid-19 vaccine i still don't see it in the nearest future even though a lot of people are talking about it but we need to wait and to see what will happen just to you know i used to come to india probably every 3 weeks i'm i didn't come in the last 9 months and i'm i'm missing the people i'm working with i'm missing the environment to to do business uh in uh and i'm of course missing the food but that's a different story um so i i, I think it's we, we need to be optimistic we need to wait a little bit there is still uncertainty but the fact that we are still strong together uh and and making sure that the business will say su- sustainable that's the most important thing right you know i mean you know uh, this phase has also kind of been a learning relearning unlearning and all of us have had uh, takeaways from it so my next question is about it you know i want to come to all of you that what have been the key takeaways for for each of you as a business entity and i want to start with mr sindhwani here uh, thanks sir so i think the key learning is that every day is a new day you 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 start a fresh every right. day you at what you are doing uh, you see the results if it's working fine you continue if it is not the environment is changing you readapt you reorganize your right. so right. there are no rules or a handbook which can guide you through this kind of a moment and you right. have to create you know like look take the for example work from home none of us uh, i mean we all thought work from home is a, is a is a theoretical concept you can probably have a few people taking off a few days in a year and that's work from home but for the 9 months continuously 100% of the people working from home i mean nobody could have imagined that could have happened and it's happened sure uh yes the team done very well they have they have delivered but i think there are challenges in that and and as 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 leaders we need to figure out what are the challenges and the way i look at it for example in specifically to this is you know the new young people uh, they do get a lot of learning by sitting together with with their peer group and you know uh, learning from them so you know right. people class who've been there done things learned it through a, a social interaction we may not really right. feel the way you know what always really bad but at the younger level fresh people they need to get that so we need to figure out what are the alternatives how do we bring back that same learning experience in a very different kind of environment so i think those are right. things you have to keep evolving you have to keep learning you have to keep looking deeper keep interacting with your teams i mean keeping the moral up of the team you know in a remote environment is itself a big challenge how do you motivate them so fear was driving it to a certain level but as this right. goes and the fear settles down you have to think of other ways to keep the team cohesive motivated uh, connected and organized right mr chadda for you how have uh, what have been the key takeaways for your business some new learnings for you and what have they been so uh, it's been it's so th- this is a life changing event i mean i call this a life changing event because it has yeah. changed the way people behave i mean um it's it's very difficult to change user behavior but um fortunately or unfortunately just in the past 4 to 5 years we've had two life changing events uh, that at least where india is concerned the first one was demonetization which which changed the way we started um uh, using digital payments 
and right. uh, the second one is this that covid it's actually affecting the entire the entire world so a time right. like this i think also presents a lot of opportunity um, you you can you some things happen which which you would not have which you would not have thought you know so there are new opportunities that come up some of the some of the companies also did capitalize on this especially in the healthcare space etc for us um, i think what we saw um, and what we wanted to do was because we saw that okay consumer behavior was changing um, so we we wanted to capitalize on that on that fact uh, we ended up um, we ended up launching a couple of platforms on ott um, a couple of apps rather on ott um for our uh, largest broadcast brand um and i think the way the way that we started working was more like uh, more like a tech startup where we started focusing on speed and agility um and what we started doing was uh, breaking down larger projects into very small micro projects so that right. instead of investing a lot of resources in one project or or in a large project we actually right. um keep reiterating and keep uh, keep we, we basically followed an iterative process to actually see you know what was the result of the micro project and then whether we want to invest more in that same direction or not um right. so so yeah i think that was that was a key learning in terms of process or or the change that we did in terms of process that has that has helped us adapt in this difficult environment right right um uh, mr kumar uh, uh, for digital players also this has been uh, i mean apart from bringing a challenging uh, time uh, an opportunity also tell me uh, uh, what has been your uh, observation and uh, learnings from this uh, these 9 months okay uh, let me put it like this i think one of the first things was uh, how connectivity mattered you know suddenly the internet became the backbone of all what you were doing i mean it was there but you know coming into an office with a lease line you never thought about it uh, i think the internet the connectivity uh, how you work within the family because trust me you know uh, when you right. work from home there is family and you know when you're working from home right morning 9 till 6 7 8 9 sometimes 10 o'clock they're just wondering why what are you sitting and doing inside uh, then people are coming and going people think any time is good time to call out uh, make a call expanded number of hours and then this concept has moved a little ahead where we look at saying work from anywhere yeah? i mean you could actually go to goa i mean there is some staff of ours which is sitting down in goa there is some staff of ours which has gone down to some hill stations and they managed to secure good connectivity and they're working from anywhere so what's happened is as long as you're being able to uh be productive and are able to contribute life becomes that much easier for all of us right right, uh, right. you know with that with that said i think what was most what was the most thing was like obviously like you said product i mean an opportunity perspective i mean think about it everybody is working from home suddenly what's happened to the commercial space i mean there are hundreds and hundreds of square feet of offices that are empty Uh, i'm sure organizations have already started thinking about it that right you know what percentage of their staff can actually work from home and right productive this job can be done comfortably from home and the employee now may actually get a choice when he's inter- when he's being interviewed you know would you like to be permanently working from home now right. for some it is uh, you know someone like me says n- no and the younger audience and the younger gen sets they turn around and say yeah wow why not i mean as long as i'm able to contribute i'm more than happy to do that uh right the thing right. was that you had to learn to grapple with emotions you know what had happened right. was this distancing between employees you know it was like right. you had a you have teams and between teams you've got rifts which gets settled especially when you sit across you see a body language you see a conversation uh you relate to the person and right. and there are times where your body language or you sign off and say listen cool off we'll take this down you know because you're talking to a screen here i think that was one one thing that you realized that emotions really played and you really didn't know when the day you know uh working from home also they never let you know uh, we never got to know whether it's a friday or a saturday and then suddenly somebody say listen today is saturday 
and he said, "Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, okay." Because that concept of getting ready and being completely moving out of the office, that structure mm-hmm. was not there. Um, right. It needed a little bit more planning. I think today, uh, again, working from home has now been able to, you know, you've structured it now. So now, in fact, if you ask someone to come to office, you have to actually switch gears. And <laughs> if he has to go sure. back to work from home, it is again switching gears and setting up the structures right. Uh, execution, right. of course, is key. So you plan well and you try and execute is something that I think that will be very, very important. And team management morale, I think, is the key. Uh, the other thing what we did was we made sure that we uh, stuck with our partners and continue to build uh and stay connected in terms of what is happening how are things what is the way forward are they looking at, what are the new signs and signals are they catching uh how can you be uh, nimble and innovative and also make sure that you could change your strategy instantly and say okay this is how we'll function and this is what it is so um it was i mean it's it's still learning we're still picking up the new habits and uh, i'm sure as we move along uh it'll be a new work culture that's going to emerge out of this right uh, mr chatterji you have heard uh, speakers before you tell me um, have we seen a permanent shift in terms of mindset uh, work culture as many of uh, them pointed out uh, and and what are the learnings from you from for you what have been the learnings for you if you could elaborate please arijit mute you're on mute Sorry. Um, first of all, Ray, that's like, that's for his job. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Ray, I think uh, the whole concept of permanence is over with this pandemic, right? So when you say, "Is there going to be a permanent mindset?" Honest answer: I don't know. Um, you know, right. we come back to doing the same things that we were doing nine months ago and take this as a passing phase. The right. jury's out there, but I think some things that. have made us kind of think and go back to the drawing board um or maybe they were always right. there and this has almost been a catalyst in kind of expediting that thought process like for yeah. example i think something that's now you know it was always a content is king i think that's more true now than ever uh the user has become about good credible content and they know where it is available and where they want to look for it so that makes us publishers work much harder in getting that content to them along with partners like the buda which can help us disseminate that content as well um b the frailties of an ad supported business model has become more evident than ever before um you are totally basing your future on an economy something like a pandemic event you have zero control so how do you build more direct to consumer relationships is the holy grail of a subscription model the answer to all of this we don't know If you go down the subscription route, um, you then need to rethink your entire data strategy. Today, uh, we don't know as much about our users. A lot of our other partners own the data. How do we get back that data as we move towards a cookie-less world, towards a subscription model? Those are things I think that this has really got all of us thinking around. Right? Uh, the overrated importance given to physical proximity. Uh, you know, we see the whole building of three hundred people, and uh, today we kind of you know gone into distributed co-working um in one of our locations and productivity is at an all time high and this would have never happened if not for this unfortunate pandemic so i think these are changes that will help us what this has done is make us go back to the drawing board on certain things we took for granted but whether all this will be in permanence i think is too early to say right right um mr bak i want to uh, bring you in at this moment and uh, I want to ask you that what has been your understanding and your perspective on uh, what people have learned and uh, at the bula how have you been helping publishers during this time specifically so first of all i think that we all learned uh, and i totally agree with what have been said here we all learned to be very agile we need to be flexibility otherwise we need to keep flexibility otherwise you're not going to be able to stand still with what's going on so you you need to be agile by the way not just in business even with right. our families with our with our parents with our kids um they are facing a lot of changes too and and we need to help them to take the right decisions in terms of right. publishers and advertisers i think that the the agility means for them 
want to help them to be creative, to find, for publisher, to find the right monetization, but to keep right. the values of your publisher, your organization at the same level as it was before COVID-19. So Arijit, for example, touched the, the issue of fake news, who is telling the right information, who is showing the right information. It's very, very, it's become very important to a lot of publishers and the way they kept their values meant a lot to them. That's for, right. the, for the publisher side. For the advertiser side, I think that we found out that a lot of advertisers didn't have any, any way of doing or creating the right content for themselves. So what right. we did in order to become agile for them, we actually opened a creative shop, creative studio, mm. and we helped them for free to run and to create content that they will be able to advertise and to sell their products. Now, right, it's, it's, right. it's, it sounds like I'm, I'm not promoting anything because it's for free, but I think this is the agility of mm. uh, what you're expecting from partners that you're working with. You need them to help you. You need them to support you. And they need to do it in a way that they listen to your needs and create solutions for you. And this is the agility I think that we are looking from all of our partners. And the last thing I think that uh, Salil touched it very, very much, and I, I strongly believe in it, is to be agile to your employees, to the people right. that work for you. You need to accommodate their needs. Not all of them are the same. Not all of them suffering the same concerns or challenges. And you need to listen to them. So, for example, he right. gave the idea of uh, working from home, working from office. What will happen in the future? Do we still need an office? Maybe yes and maybe not. Maybe to some, maybe for R&D, yes, but for salespeople, no. I, I don't know what's the answer, but I know that I need to be very flexible and to keep myself very, very open with my mindset and to listen to my mm. employees and to the people around right. me. Right. So picking from what you said, uh, I, I just want to pose my next question. To, I want to start with Mr. Chatterjee. Uh, what has also happened is that the way uh, content is consumed has has uh, has changed. You know, there's a different interaction between the consumer and content. And if you look at it, for example, my question to you, Mr. Chatterjee, is: Are publishers now looking at a hybrid uh, model uh, with low cost uh, ads and uh, low subscription cost to stay relevant? I would. Uh, again, I don't know what you, what you mean by low cost ads, because I think the day you start going low on your advertising, you have any hope of being premium, which I'm sure all of us on this panel strive to be. So I don't think um, there will ever be a point where we will want to go in for low cost ads, right? Mm -hmm. I think what will happen is you will start augmenting or rather complementing your existing ad business. And I mentioned the earlier question as well. If, if anything, this pandemic has completely... Um, evidence the fact of how uh, you know inconsistent an ad-supported model can be. So, and that's where you know partners like Tabula, business models around content marketing, business models around subscription. You you talk about subscription, absolutely. But you know, I, I don't think all of us agree that India is not, and at least we think. And I'm, I would love to hear what some of the others think. India is not. Um, a country where you can peddle a subscription for anything and get people to subscribe for it. So the moment you need to get into a subscription model, it's probably you're looking at a three to five year plan. What's your data strategy around it? What's the value proposition that you're going to build around content and user experience? Um, so it's not a short term game. Nobody can say I'm going to roll out a, a subscription model because the pandemic's here. And the moment the pandemic goes away, I'm going to roll it back out. So I, I don't think those things will happen, Rahel. Um, you know, uh, content marketing, and that's where Tabula plays such an important role for us as partners, not uh, as just a platform. We work together on creating content. And Ran mentioned uh, every advertiser today wants to tell a story. I think the days are over when um, a brand would say, on digital specifically, let me run some video ads or pre rolls or just about banner advertising. Uh, nobody wants to buy banner advertising anymore. That's just like the uh, bottom of the barrel. You're scraping the bottom of the barrel pretty much, right? People want, brands want to tell stories. And that's where publishers and platforms like the Bula become so critical because you create content, you create, you curate that content, and then you figure out ways of getting that story out. These are the right. kinds of business models that I think will become more par for the course than exceptions like they are. 
Uh, and I think those are the kind of um, you know supplementary business models that we'll see. It's not about just low cost ads or low cost subscription. I think we just have to say how do we move towards monetizing audiences rather than just a page view. I think you'll see that dramatic shift on digital as we move along. Right. Anyone else else who wants to uh, address this? I want to just yes, I, I, yes I, I think the data data is the key uh, the the key driver here especially for publisher, but also today for a lot of advertisers. Uh, you need to get insights. You need to know what your audience want and, and what they like. Uh, and if you don't, and, and mainly they, they are reading some articles or content within your site, you need to know what they want to consume. Uh, and it's, I think it's, it's really important for each publisher um, to have insights into their audience and to act accordingly. So uh, right. there is no question that the data is the key driver for a lot of things, pandemic or not pandemic, data is the key right now. Right, right. Mr. Kumar, I can see you nodding. Would you like to add a bit to it? So your audio is on mute, yeah. I guess Rohit is infectious, huh? everybody starts <laughs> I was, I was about to say that, that my <laughs> presence is infectious. No, I, I you know, I, I think uh, there's no doubt. I mean, I think that's the, um, that's the future gold uh, with uh, all the things that are happening around with the cookie uh, data and first party data is going to be really key. And right. uh, that is where partners, especially, I mean, you know, when you look at Taboola and I, I recall the first time I was catching up with Ran and we were discussing whether, you know, which are the partners you'd like to really select and go for. It was that you had options. Uh, I remember, uh, I don't want to name other brands here. Uh, but there was stiff competition. And when you looked at what mattered the most for an organization, uh, came in from the Tabula team. Uh, right from the top, everyone was interested to, I mean, their hunger to capture business is very good. And in a very positive way, we could make out that uh, being a global organization, um, I've had the pleasure of meeting there, being in their office in uh, Israel, as well as in Bangkok and in the U.S., and I'm sure they have a couple of more offices. Uh, he was talking about China and Salil. You need to explore. Salil. <laughs> yeah, it depends on the QBR. <laughs> so, you know what happens is that when you looked at uh, trying to look at which are the partners, you looked at this partner where it said, you know, I'm I'm global. I am uh, leading this by technology, data, and numbers. So we got all of that ingredient in there. And um, I think it was a fabulous choice. And today also, when we look at trying to move ahead with data, I remember about a year and a half back, there was a workshop they had organized in Israel where uh, quite a few publishers, I think most of us on this panel would have been there. I also got a ping from a friend of mine saying, is this the version? He's looking at this live broadcast and uh, uh, so he said, is this the toned down version of Israel, uh, uh, to, uh, the get together we had? I said, no, I, I'm sure Rand's not going to let it go like that. At the moment, times are better. We are going to be back in Israel or uh, the headquarters. So we felt that this was, you know, where data is required, where technology help is required, where innovation is required, uh, where you need some support from a partner. You saw it all coming. Mm. And uh, I must give this to their credit that uh, being whatever times it is, uh, you know, uh, financially they were very stable and we've never seen a issue on the, on that front. So this is something and, and you know, they've been very transparent and I hear about their competitors very often that they try and pick up a part of the contract and throw that saying, listen, this is not eligible. Hence this deduction, this deduction, we never seen that. And um, finally to say this, that while the data is collated, all the information, uh, it's mm -hmm. transparently shared. And I must say this, when I say <clears throat> transparently shared is, uh, it's, they have a very strong regime of a quarterly uh, business review, which we call as QBR. And the best part in that QBR is, it's not that some junior person is sitting down giving the information. It's a two day long conversation. So, right. You right. get into the grind, you get to know all your data, they talk about what they're planning to do in the future, how the performance of the partnership has been in the last 
what are uh, what are the issues they are facing what are the areas they want us to support and also say where are the areas where they can support us right. and they also look at future projections so around this time i think that helped a lot we put a lot of that stuff together and uh, in fact we had more than one or two of those uh, where we had quite a few of back and forth and saying i think we could do this and this will do better and that helped to grow in revenue it helped grow in uh, the data that was being accumulated and how to use it more productively was something that both of us saw and going forward i think it's going to be very important i mean uh, we have to understand that individuals organizations where you have your data how secure it is uh, whether it is following the policies and the guidelines global guidelines you're doing that and all of that is uh, is being done very well and i strongly believe that uh, the data play is going to be important it's going to get more and more right i want to bring in mr sindhavani and mr chadda at this point uh, you know this uh, the theme is uh, uh, stronger together uh, i want to start with you mr chadda that uh, how has your partnership been with the bula and uh, in your view uh, what else can they do how can they make it even better uh, how can they support their partners even better well it's 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 been a it's i i would echo most of what salil has said that uh, that's been a it's been a very strong partnership uh, i think what um, the insights i look forward to the qbr as well uh, to be very mm-hmm. honest because some of, i do tend to get some of the insights that i may have missed or my team may have missed earlier mm-hmm. um, and in fact um, if i were to be very honest i've actually used the template of the qbr for my internal product team as well and told them to you know track track it in a similar format for for other things so thanks to thanks to rand for that um mm. so um and yeah i think every qbr we do uh, we do tend to see uh, some interesting new concepts and ideas that uh, that the team that the bula team is working on and that they intend to bring in which are which are mostly good innovations um and hence it's it's mostly about hey look yeah this is good we want to do this and hey look yeah this is also good we want to do this um so yeah i think uh, it's been it's been a good strong partnership and we we um we hope that this this continues for a much much longer time and and explore more ways of working together in a more strategic way um and possibly um and possibly ex- expand that even further you know um ran and i have been having right. talks about it so yeah, we're looking forward right. to that we're looking forward to the to a very good future Right, uh, Mr. Sindhavani. Same question to you. Your association with the Bula and uh, what can they do to support better? I think we just renewed with the Bula for the next two years, so I think that just goes out to say <laughs> belief uh, you know, in in the Bula team. Having said that, right. you know, I think a very small example. Just a couple of hours before you know this conference, uh, we were discussing a new product idea, and uh, the editorial team wanted certain features, and they were saying, you know. tech and product will take time to build it and and i remember that in one of the qbr you know the bula team had mentioned that they could help us with with that particular aspect and right, uh, right. so I, i told the team that okay, you know don't worry about this reach out to the bula tomorrow and and your problem will be solved so it's not just about revenues per se so there's a lot of other things that the bula does and they bring out those mm. things you know those ideas to you in their qbr and i just picked up one example from that which you know just happened to happen a couple of hours back i would like right. to add one one thing royal because i'm i'm a little bit concerned none of them gave me a good idea of what i need to improve for the next couple of months <laughs> but i'm going to give to myself i think that uh we need to get better connection to the editorial teams of publishers that are working with tabula in india in order to empower them to use the right insights because they have all the tools they have all the knowledge they have the data in front of them right. sometimes they don't know how to utilize it and that's our job to to show them because we all agree that data is the key right now and we need to empower them to use the data in the right way so i uh, i think that's something i'm taking to myself and my team uh to make sure that all the the editorial teams will be well equipped with the knowledge that they need in order to utilize in a better way the, the data that they have I'll add to that actually. Um, I'll add to what Rand said. Um, that uh, that 
another another piece that i can actually suggest to ran and and we, we've been wanting to do that for a while is uh, is more around vernacular languages in the country so we've seen some tremendous mm-hmm. growth come in um, on the vernacular side um, in right. the past year um, and some of the tools that we have from the bula uh, work super well for uh, for international languages and ran i'd really appreciate if you know we can we can have them in right. in vernacular languages so that vernacular editorial can can gain the benefit of data as well as the the english editorial team are doing right uh, it's, it's Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Bak, I want to uh, ask you this question. Though you touched upon it earlier as well, but uh, so these un- times of uncertainty that we saw, where consumer, you know, where on digital they were consuming uh, aggressively content, but there were low advertising spends. Uh, you know, at the same time, uh, tell me, how did you uh, deal with those rapid changes that happened in a matter of few weeks, few months? You know, how did you adjust to it? So first of all, I, I, I today. Uh, I have the you know the the ability to look on the perspective uh, a little bit back or to do kind of a post mortem. So yes, there was a time that the advertiser spend went down, but actually it came back and in a much stronger way. So and we heard it from other people here that the business went down, but the business actually went up dramatically and significantly for for m- most of the the publishers around the world. By the way, it's not just in India. um right we we what i i can say that we as i said at the beginning we were very agile to understand let's take airlines so airlines frozen they're paused there is nothing you can do with them and this is the right time to shift your efforts to a vertical that can work much better insurance face mask uh health uh working from home environment uh learn distance learning this is all stuff that a lot of companies become flourish or start to flourish as soon as pandemic right. starts so you need to shift your resources you need to shift your people and the mindset in order mm-hmm. to make success i'm going to give another example mm-hmm. we took our hr people we stopped to recruit right. you can recruit on on the at the beginning of pandemic so we took the hr people we gave them a very uh urgent training to become sdrs and they helped mm-hmm. us they helped us with a lot of leads so you right. need to again agile agility uh and you need to shift your resources in order to keep the creativity and and also to be productive right 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 this strategy uh tell me uh, uh, this uh, rush of uh, readers you know online coming online growing digitally has it also uh, uh, forced publishers to introduce some new uh, products when it comes to news uh, and what have been those innovations at ndtv for example do you th- see uh, what kind of innovation do you see happening as we move on so i think um, really like, you know I, i can't stress enough on this and you know on the audio question as well um mm-hmm. the pl- the flurry of readers also makes you want to take a much stronger look on the kind of content that you're creating um right. you know with with you know with new platforms coming on board i think what we've seen is new form factors uh new platforms becoming uh, more and more prevalent right if someone's at home the when they're creating when they when they consume content what content they consume um becomes more important and therefore what we've done as a strategy is always making sure that you can access our content anytime and everywhere i think under the entire mantra of anytime and everywhere uh, it's really right. important that the same premium credible content with the same accuracy and the same speed gets published whether it's our own platform whether it's a partner platform or or anywhere else that's what, that's the hallmark of what we want to stand for Right. um so on the lines of we realized that a lot of our people were a lot of our users were reading content late into the night or in the evenings and therefore we actually introduced a dark mode on our app, um to kind of help train their eyesight etc and make it easier for people to read content so the dark mode was one of them um we introduced an epg product where we mm-hmm. saw otts and roads here so i'm sure he'll bear testimony to this people suddenly had so much time to spend on ott platforms on what they want to watch recommendations etc so that's a platform that we launched where people go and search for content and you know ratings and social viewing etc so that's something that we started working on and we see this moving forward as well so i think those are some of the uh, areas uh, that you know like we just launched on glance the lock screen app 
um, uh, and on Snapchat. We are going to be uh, powering a lot of news content on Glance and Snapchat. That's just another example mm -hmm. of us trying to reach an audience that wouldn't really come to that, the 18 to 25 year old audience, which wouldn't be an NDTV audience. But we want them to get the content in their format. It's a vertical video. It's mobile friendly, short form mobile. So these are the kind of um, changes I think we are all making vis-a-vis uh, -vis platforms that we're going to be available on. Um, and we just right. see this becoming uh, a part of the DNA of uh, business and work moving forward. Right. Uh, Mr. Kumar, same question, the kind of innovation you have done in terms of uh, new uh, products, news products, and where would that uh, I mean, take you in 2021? Would it remain the same? Would it change a post-pandemic? I think the, uh, it's still on mute. I, no, no. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I guess, you know, each one of us are working with uh, various innovations right across. I mean, for example, for us, we added a uh, few of the touch channels which were in various uh, regional as well as local uh, targeted uh, form of content. Uh, then there was podcast that got introduced because we realized more and more podcast was going on and we doubled up on podcast in terms of news because audio news is again something that's really big. Uh, again, being streamed at uh, various platforms, including devices, especially the connected ones like Alexa. Um, <clears throat> so you're pushing content there. And then obviously there was a leap in terms of trying to see how we could do video commerce. I think going forward, that video commerce piece is going to be something that's going to grow uh, much bigger as we go along. Uh, very recently, um, there were some announcements made by uh, some other players talking about how video commerce is going to grow through the roof. Uh, those have been certain areas where uh, the group has been investing. The digital side of business, we've always invested and we continue to push as much as possible. Um, in fact, um, hiring is on a double drive, uh, trying to make sure that, uh, you know, you get the best talent that's available in the trade today. Right. So that goes on right across, whether it's uh, in the form of radio or uh, video or text. And uh, again, we're trying to work out new and more innovative ways of our digital magazine, which is the India Today most read magazine across Asia. And uh, right to ensure that uh, there were no disruptions of any sort in terms of because physically it wasn't available, then how do you make it available uh, digitally right across? So there has been a good focus there going forward into the next year, 21, like I mentioned, uh, the focus drivers are going to be uh, audio uh, podcasts, how they are growing. We're seeing huge growth adaption there. Uh, we are also noticing uh, the video piece growing and consumption on the bigger uh, screens grow because like I said, you know, how smart TV consumption certainly grown. Everybody's sitting at home. Uh, mobile right. obviously has been growing because now everybody's at home. I'm sure not Indian houses, uh, four members have four TVs. So what's happened is there is there are four mobiles which are picking up content and you're trying to make sure that you've been able to personalize content. That's one other area where we see Tabula helps in with the feed that they bring in. Uh, they have a good... Uh, intelligence tool which is uh, always learning and i i mean I, these are two words which we all will hear you know artificial intelligence and machine learning keeps improving uh, but that's a fact i mean their recommendation engine uh, helps uh, in fact we've seen more than 100% uh, click through rates right. which helps uh, not only increase uh, pages per visit from within the content of our of our entire repertoire of content and uh, reduce the bounce rate effectively. And uh, that's one of their unique factors. So we see that more and more of that growing. And uh, as we move along, data is again going to be a key area where we are going to be focusing much more and see how we build that. Right. Right. Mr. Simbiani, uh, my final question uh, to all of you, I'll start with you, is that uh, 20. 20 has been a year we'll all remember for all the reasons, maybe negative reasons. But uh, what do you want 2020 to look like from a business and a personal perspective? You mean 2021? 2021, yes. So I think uh, 
that's a given that you know everybody wants the business to grow and stabilize. I think uh, if I get to the core, uh, I think we would like to see our revenue stream more diversified uh, because I don't think the pandemic is going away anywhere. As as Ran said, you know, uh, there's talk of vaccine, but but everybody getting the vaccine is still a long time away, and we will see more waves coming. So so I think we have to be prepared. And diversification is one way of preparing for it. Secondly, I right. think, uh, like it or not, the ad inventory is going to keep on increasing as more and more people digitize, as the consumption shifts to more digital platforms. The supply side is going to increase, and the prices will keep mm-hmm. dropping. I think for the advertising part, so the value right. of advertising will be on what kind of audiences are you able to collect, and what knowledge do you have about your audiences. I think that's where data becomes key. So if if right. I have information about my users, you know, which can be add value to the advertisers, uh, right? Which, like you know, this is what Tabula does, and that's where they create value arbitrage. So that will help help you get premium rates, and that's what publishers are interested in. So we right. we are not platforms which will aggregate billions of people. Uh, we all operate in niches, and we we get a certain percentage of the market. But I think where all of us excel is attracting a certain profile of audience. But today, what right. happens? Is a large part of these audiences are sold at the same price as any other audience, and that premium that you 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 are uh, supposed to get for the premiumness of audiences is not really happening. So I think ability right. to bring data to get that next year and to ensure that use that data to get the premium is one thing. Uh, diversify revenue streams, whether it's subscriptions, whether it's content commerce, whether it's um, content marketing, whether it's e-conferences. I think that's the other large part that you want to grow and uh, get right. And I think ensuring that your teams say stay safe and healthy, uh, you are able right. to get the right work environment from them, whether they work from home or whether they work in an office environment. How do you ensure their well-being? uh you know for a uh, last mm-hmm. months have been very high stress for a lot of people right mm-hmm. the impact of stress is not immediately visible but it starts showing over prolonged periods so how do you find means to mitigate that stress uh, across your teams and people across different levels uh, the good thing is right. the work behind us uh, as sarvel said you know we are back in the hiring cycle we are now planning for the next year we are hiring for the next year we are preparing for it so i think those are positives and that will help it to solve the issues but i think for me the largest concern is how do you ensure that your team stay in the best of spirits uh, going forward and uh, the new work environment becomes more conducive to, uh, for them whichever way it is right right mr chada so uh, same question to you how do you want 2020 to look like from a business perspective from a personal perspective and your thoughts Uh, sorry it's, it's on mute uh. yeah third time is a charm i thought but it didn't happen yeah <laughs> so uh, 2020 wasn't uh, 2020 hasn't been a bad year for us at all uh, yes from from a health perspective there have been the concerns that everybody's talked been talking about from but from a business perspective if i speak um it's not been a bad year for us um, hmm. um and hence and personally personally as well i mean if business does well then i'm happy um so it's it's very very intertwined so uh, from business perspective it's been it's been it's been well it's been good um, we've been able to uh, we've been able to show some very good numbers both in terms of uh, user growth as well as revenues i echo the sentiments of my co panelists about you know um the fact that there have to be new eras new areas of monetization um i echo the sentiment around the focus on video in fact um, i didn't mention earlier that we launched um, news ott apps um, during the pandemic in fact and i really appreciate the the effort that the team actually put in um, working in in the kind of environment and actually building brand new apps and launching them during the lockdown um, so it it was great i think what i want 2020 to remind us of is is the grit and strength of the team that we have um in fact all of us have because all of the all of the leaders here i think um have seen that you know that their teams have 
have stood the uh, the tough time and uh, and have actually come out on top each each and every one of us so i want 2020 to stand for the fact that um that if, when the going gets tough we we were tough enough to actually get going um and 2021 is um the focus there uh, is obviously going to be about um new areas of monetization new products we have a lot of things that we had lined up actually for 2020 uh which unfortunately for the pandemic we we will have to do, uh, we have had to push them to 2021 um because like ran said once the pandemic started some of the pressures on hiring etc happened um and hence we had to put some plans on hold um to keep mindful of the investments that we are making um because right. nobody knew as to which direction is our things going to go in so uh, so yeah we we look back at 2020 in a very positive manner uh, because of right. the way that business has turned out um and uh, we are very excited about going into 2021 hopefully um being able to to execute the plans that we had for uh, for 2020 early on right um mr chatterjee your quick thoughts um firstly i hope in 2021 we can do this in person and we don't have to be doing this virtually <laughs> absolutely so um, you know cheers to that i agree and that too in the tabula office in israel yeah you know what <laughs> <laughs> absolutely fine with me point i'll settle for anywhere so as long as we are all together in person and socializing and we can get run to india i think we we'll settle for india as well uh, so that's the first thing that you know that comes to mind um hmm. from a business standpoint we just want to keep building on the fundamentals getting those right um mm. it's been a tough year i mean i know numbers are great uh while revenue um uh the last quarter we recorded the highest ever revenue in the digital business uh, growth of 31% year on year so business mm. is good but make no mistake it's been a tough year uh mentally challenging uh, more than numbers uh numbers are just one part of the business the entire framework of you know health uh people um go getting through uh, you know friends and families and colleagues who have been affected by the pandemic it's been a tough year so hopefully it you know we are all in a better space mentally next year is what i would want uh, to hope for everyone and once we do that right. i think business will follow suit so i think we'll be covered there right 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 uh, so there are uh, some questions uh, from uh, the audiences i'll just try to get into them uh, yes uh, there's a question from mr sumit rana content takes a long time to kind of uh, yield results is display so important for keeping the gas on mr kumar i want to ask i want to pose this question to you go ahead yeah hello yeah yes yes okay can you hear me yeah yes go ahead can i can i get the question again please Uh, so mr rana is asking uh, content takes a long time to yield results is display still most important for keeping the gas on no i don't i mean uh, listen display is um, is a pa- is a is a key ma- a part to the mix but uh, you know uh, would it keep would it help you keep burning no uh, advertisers right. today look uh, look at tell a story they want to do it in the most innovative ways one of the reasons i if you recall i mean during this session i mentioned about uh, video commerce uh, that's again a part of the storytelling it's uh, also trying to get contextualized and make sure that you know what you're talking about how you're going to narrate the story what is it going to be uh, it could be in form of a text content piece it could be in a form of a of a video story uh, anything like that Uh, how do you integrate the advertisement with your content is going to be more important display advertisement is not uh, i mean today not everybody is really interested and it's not um, a key component i mean it's not the biggest component anymore right right mr buck i want to pose this question to you it is from uh, surbhi nagpal uh, the question is how do you see content marketing taking shape in the times to come basically the trends that uh, we can expect so i, I think that uh, first of all content marketing is for long time um stand uh, and I, and i think that we're going to see a shape of video as as salil mentioned i i do believe that video will become a very key component within the content marketing 
Um, I also think that uh, in some countries they call it native, um, and that will be embedded into discovery platform like Tabula, that native will be part of the offering. Uh, as of today, it's, it's part of the offering, so it's, it's about native and about discovery. Right. I think, by the way, the most important thing, the most important thing about content <clears throat> marketing or about discovery platforms will be the place you will discover content in the future. So until today, we thought only about desktop and maybe mobile. Right. Maybe probably, right, right. probably in the, in the next couple of years, you will find it in autonomous cars, on your refrigerator, uh, in some other places, maybe on your TV. Uh, so content marketing or discovery platform will become much more wide use for a lot of users. Right, right. Mr. Samrani, there's a question. Uh, do you see subscription as the primary source of revenue for digital publishers in the future? So I think it will become an important part of this uh, revenue mix. Uh, mm -hmm. Becoming a primary mix, I think it's, it's a long journey. Uh, I think Arijit mentioned that, you know, it, it's, it's three to five years uh, at the minimum to get to scale. If you look at examples in the West, for instance, you look at the most successful NYT or WSJ or Financial Times, you know, they've been mm -hmm. in the game for almost 20 years before they hit, you know, a, a million mark on subscribers. So subscription yeah. is not a short term play. Uh, it is a very important play. Uh, it is going to be a indeed uh, integral part mm -hmm. of the new strategy, I think, for most publishers. Uh, but you will have advertising, subscriptions, and other forms of, of revenue as a, as a part of your mix. Different people will have different proportions, but I think people will like to have uh, a diversified revenue stream. Right. Uh, there's a question from Antariksh Goel. Uh, this is for Mr. Chadda. <clears throat> what can be the impact of any new censorship laws uh, on advertising and subscription revenue streams? Well, uh... Till now, I mean, digital has been a free bird com from where OTTA is concerned. Um, and I mean, they've been, I mean, we've been taking uh, liberties in terms of content because, and we've been showing the, the true, true reality, good, good content. I mean, um, it, it is going to impact to, um, to an extent um, that, <clears throat> so while it may not, I mean, so two parts here. Yeah. One is uh, the quality of content or the kind of content that, that you're going to end up seeing. Um, and second is the impact that it's going to have on revenues. Now, um, I, I don't see that it is, it is going to have too much of impact on revenues. Um, while, I mean, good content is good content. If you chop off a few scenes or you add, add a few beeps here and there, um, I mean, while it's obviously not going to be appreciated by the, by the end user, but then if it's happening every, I mean, if it's happening across platforms, you, you don't really end up having a choice from, from a user perspective, but I don't think that it's going to affect revenues, um, revenues at all. Right. Um, I, I think there will be some kind of discontent among users because of these, this censorship, because they're used to watching, um, you know, uh, all kinds of content on digital. Um, and once right. the censorship laws come in, uh, there's going to be, I mean, some sort of customer dissatisfaction. Great. We have still a lot of questions, uh, but uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. And I want to thank all of you for joining us, especially the Bula uh, for partnering and uh, supporting uh, E4M and bringing us E4M and Tabula talk series. And we look forward to many more and many more such conversations with all of you. Thank you once again for joining us. Thank you very much and uh, wish you a healthy year for everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.